Hello everyone, these are difficult times with the coronavirus causing chaos around the world and I'm sure many of you have been affected by this. So you're probably working from home or taking some time out to keep yourselves safe. So I wish you all the best and hope you're keeping safe and healthy. Now there's also been some chaos in the world of AWS certification and because of what's happening, especially with exam center closures, AWS have released recently that they're going to extend the expiration of the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam. So that actually might come as a relief for many people who were planning on taking the exam but couldn't get into a test center recently. So the question now arises as to which exam people should take. Recently, I've been saying just start focusing on the SAA C02 if you're just starting because there wasn't enough time to get ready for the SAA C01. But now you have an extra three months until June 30th, 2020. That means if you're just getting started now, you can pretty much choose between whether you want to do the SAA C01 or the SAA C02. So which option should you take? I've posted a few times and blogged about the differences between the two exams. Now I took the BEDA exam at the end of last year. I passed that exam and I've posted detailed feedback on my experience from that exam. Now, there are definitely some new topics in that exam which you do need to know. So there are topics like AWS Global Accelerator and Amazon FSX which aren't covered in the SAA C01. And I've made a detailed list of the new topics that you need to study if you're gonna take the new version of the exam. That being said, most of the exam is still gonna be the same core topics. The AWS Certified Solutions Architects Associate exam is always gonna concentrate very heavily on Amazon EC2, EBS, auto scaling, elastic load balancing, S3, EFS, and VPC amongst other services. So that's gonna make up a large part of the exam. And really you need to do the same study for the, as you would for the SAA C01 and then add in the additional topics. Now it might be that the new exam doesn't actually focus on some topics from the current exam, but until we're very clear on which those are, I'm not taking those out of the course. So if you take our course, you'll find that we have the SAA C01 topics, and then we have a bunch of additional topics labeled as SAA C02. So you can take those if you're studying for that exam. And then for the practice questions, we separated out the practice questions for the SAA C02 from the SAA C01. Now, in terms of the question difficulty, I thought the questions on the exam weren't more difficult than the SAA C01. So I think the new exam questions are possibly a bit less ambiguous. I thought they were better written and therefore I found them a bit more straightforward to answer as long as you know the topics that are being covered. And that's why it's important to make sure you're studying those topics. Now we've also provided detailed cheat sheets for all of these topics on our website as well, and they're totally free for everyone. So to sum it up, if you're just getting started, you can choose one exam over the other. If you think it's gonna take you somewhere close to three months, or you're not quite ready to get started quite yet, I would suggest focusing on the new version of the exam and make sure that you're aware of the topics that you need to study that are different to the old version of the exam. So I hope that helps you understand which exam you should take. And if you want a bit more detail, I'm gonna go over to my screen now and show you the blog article that I wrote after I took the BEDA exam which goes into quite a bit of detail about the new topics that you need to study. Hi guys, so I just wanna take you through a couple of blog articles that might really help you if you're looking to take the SAA C02 version of the Solutions Architect Associate exam. So come to our site, digitalcloud.training, and then go to blog, and you'll find there's a few articles here mentioning SAA C02. If I scroll down a little way, I'll find this one here, the new 2020 AWS Certified Solutions Architects Associate Exam. And if you go into here, this is the one that contains my detailed feedback of my experience from the exam. Now, obviously I can't give too much away, but what I do do is actually talk you through the exam blueprint here, the question format, and then I give you some specific tips on what you need to know. So these are some of the sorts of topics that came up in my exam and that I believe will come up in yours. I've also spoke to other people who I know who took the BEDA exam and got some feedback from them. So I've put all that information together. So this is our best understanding of what's in the new exam at this current time. Of course, as the exam is released 
and we get more feedback from the exam, this will probably change a bit. I'm sure there'll be some more additions to what you need to learn and we'll be adding that to our course all the time. So for storage, you'll find there's a few new services like FSX and then there's some particular nuances of services that are already in the existing exam. So just make sure that you know those facts. Then there's coverage of high performance computing and here you may need to make sure you understand elastic network adapters, network interfaces, and elastic fabric adapters. Again, these aren't new concepts, they've been around a while, but it's something that's getting particularly tested on at the moment, probably because there's an uptake in high performance computing. Coming down to network, we've got AWS Global Accelerator, another service that's not in the SAAC01, but you will find it now in the SAAC02. In fact, that comes up in came up for a few questions for me. Then coming down to databases, Aurora Serverless might come up, and there's a few things around management and governance such as AWS organizations, some particular facts. Again, this isn't something new. It would be covered to a certain extent in the SAAC01, but you still need to understand it and probably to a deeper level for SAAC02. So have a look through this article. Hopefully that will help you gain a better understanding of what you need to train on. And then if you come back a higher level here to our main blog section, you'll find there's a few more articles helping you to prepare and understand the differences between the exams. So I hope that helps you to get started and I hope you're all keeping safe and well.